These are five Ryobi tools that even a hater would love, but there's two here that I think you should avoid. Let's go. About a year ago, I made this video. It's the hater's guide to Ryobi, and it's heavy because of all the hater comments on that video. I know you may turn your nose up when you walk by Ryobi and Home Depot, but there's some hidden gems here I think you should consider for your shop. Now in my hater's guide video, I pointed out that this router was not one of my favorites because of how top heavy it was. Well, they have a different version that I wasn't aware of. This is an old version. I'm not even sure they sell this one anymore. The new version though is much better balanced and is a very good trim router for the shop. I've used this quite a bit over the last year, almost year, and I have been very impressed. Has plenty of power, has variable speed. I like the way that the uh, depth adjustment works on this. I also really like the ergonomics of this one. It's much better balanced. Again, on the top side, you can see here the difference between the two. This one is a much better made ergonomically. It just doesn't tip over on you. And the fact that it fits nicely in the hand, it's not overly big. And I just think it's a really well-made router and worth your consideration if you're a woodworker. Now this isn't a two and a quarter horsepower router that you're gonna use in the router table that you're gonna be plowing through deep dados and grooves and things. But for edge profiles, this thing has worked awesome in the shop. I've really liked having it. It's a great little router if you're in the market and especially because of the price point of this router, this is a really good option, especially if you're on a budget or even if you're not on a budget, you just want something that's not gonna break the bank. It's just a good all around router. One thing I like about the new version versus the old version is the fact that they've kind of slimmed all of this down. You can see this giant shoulder here and that's where the weight of this thing was tipping backwards. And if you're trying to do an edge trim or an edge profile, you don't want your router uh, tipping on you. You want to keep it straight up and down. And this one is much, much better balanced. As you can see, it just doesn't have a giant, I'm gonna call it a shoulder. I don't know what it is. It's just out of balance, but this new version works extremely well. This old version also did not have variable speed. The new one does. So that's also important depending on what bit you're using. If you're using a bigger bit, you're gonna to wanna to slow that down a little bit. If you're using a smaller diameter bit, then you're gonna to wanna to speed that up. Works well. I like the on-off switch here too. And this has built-in LEDs. It also has a soft start motor, which makes life much easier on you. It's not pulling and jerking on you when you try to uh, turn it on. So that's it's just a good safety feature to have, I think, in a good router. If you pair it with that high output battery, it works extremely well. I do like the depth adjustment here. It works very much like the Milwaukee and the Rigid. Of course, they're all TTI brands, so it's kind of a similar depth adjustment. You flip the switch to unlock this. You can take this off, push the button. You can remove this altogether, which is handy if you wanted to mount this in a router table similar to the mini router table that I built for my DeWalt. You can do the very same thing for the Ryobi. Now, what I like about the depth adjustment is this little turn dial here. You can really fine tune the depth in any setting that you want and then lock it in place. And speaking of locking it in place, once you lock this down, it's not moving. I've had a couple of routers, trim routers that want to uh, slip a little bit after it's being used for a while. If that happens, literally all you have to do is tighten that little bolt or nut in there and it'll tighten everything up. All in all, this is a fantastic little router for the price. Now I buried the lead a little bit, but number two on the list is my favorite Ryobi tool that I own and it is the 18 gauge Brad Nailer. They call it the Airstrike Brad Nailer. This thing is awesome. And for the price, it's hard to beat. It's hard to find another cordless Brad Nailer in this price range with a lot of the features that you want in a Brad Nailer. If you don't have a Brad Nailer in the shop, especially a cordless Brad Nailer, I have uh, pneumatic Brad Nailers. They work great. But having a cordless Brad Nailer is fantastic just to be able to move around the shop without getting tangled up in the cords. Again, it uses standard 18 gauge Brad nails, easy to load, has LED on the front. That's kind of handy. On the back, you'll notice a pressure adjustment that you can turn up or down. On the front here, you can adjust the depth that it's going to be able to shoot those nails in, uh, either deeper or shallower, just depending on how far you want them to go in. Sometimes you don't want them to sink too far into the material. They may break through the backside of it, whatever you're connecting together. I mean, most all brad nails have this, but there it is. Another thing to note is there's two triggers on here. The top one will fire the nail. The bottom one activates the LED light. I think that's a nice little feature to add too. You can use brad nails from 5 8 all the way up to 2 8 inches long, 18 gauge, of course. These are very inexpensive. I buy them by the bundles on Amazon. I'll link to them below, but you can get multiple different sizes in a pack. That's what I like. Now, one of my favorite features on this Brad Nailer is this little switch right here inside the trigger guard. If you push it to the left, you see a single Brad nail. If you push it to the right, 
The little three nail icon is on there. On the single brad nail, flip that switch. It's gonna shoot one brad nail. If you push that switch over where it shows the multiple brad nails, all you do is squeeze the trigger one time. And you see that it's not firing because that isn't depressed. When you pull the trigger and you press that down, it's gonna shoot a brad nail. As long as you're holding the trigger down, it will continue to fire nails into the board without having to re-pull that trigger. And that is great, especially when you're putting on a lot of stuff like baseboards or trim or something, you just wanna pop a bunch of nails in there. I love that feature about this. It's my favorite feature on this brad nail. Now, what I notice on the firing of those nails into that board that they all are consistent depth. Again, you can adjust that depth if you want them deeper or more shallow, but this thing works extremely well especially at this price point. As far as ergonomics go, it does have a little heft to it. I mean, it's a 18 gauge brad nailer. Most of these cordless brad nailers are a little hefty, but it does have good ergonomics as far as your hand grip and everything feels nice in the hand. If you're using this overhead a bunch, it would suck after a while, but just general use in the shop, it's been a great addition. Number three on the list is their full size circular saw. This is a seven and a quarter inch saw. The one plush brushless line, same as the Brad Naylor. This is a very nice little tool for the price. Again, the price plays a big driver in a lot of these tools because Ryobi has a nice price point, especially when they're on sale. You can get a lot of the battery combo deals. This is a nice, powerful saw. Has all the features of any other standard circular saw out there. You can do bevel cuts up to 56 degrees, actually. One reason I like the Ryobi one is it's much lighter weight versus the other one that I have. Both of these have four amp hour batteries in it and the rigid is much heavier. Like it's noticeably heavier and then the Ryobi is much lighter. Using this freehand, it's much easier to manipulate, move this around versus the heavier rigid. This has plenty of power to do most of all the cuts you're gonna be doing, especially if you're just using this on the job site or around the house for DIY projects. I like the depth adjustment on here. You literally just flip a switch in the back and then raise and lower it wherever you want and then lock that back down in place. Uh, the blade that comes with this, actually pretty good which is saying something because a lot of times when you get saws of any kind, table saws, miter saws, even circular saws, the blades they send on them are trash. This one's a pretty good blade. Been quite impressed with this tool overall since I've gotten it in the shop. It also has a soft start motor. It does take it a little bit to spin down, but not too bad. It also has a built-in LED, so you need that. Now, is this at the level of say a skill worm drive, like corded saw? No, it's not. It's not meant for that, but for a cordless saw, it's a pretty good option. Don't laugh at me. Some of you will, but a bunch of you won't because you know the value of this. Cordless hot glue gun. On a budget, this thing is ridiculously inexpensive for what you're getting and you'll use this a lot in the shop. Or what you'll do is you'll need it and you'll have it and that's where the value comes in. So if I'm gonna use a planer sled and my board is twisted and I'm trying to flatten the top of that board, this is where this comes in handy because you can hot glue those shims on to your sled and to stick it to the board that you're planing and it won't cause any damage to the board or your sled. This peels off easily, but it sticks it good enough so that you can flatten that board out. That's where this comes in the most handy for me in the shop but there's other applications you can use in the wood shop. Now, if you're cutting multiple boards, so three, four, one bys or two bys, and you're trying to get them all the exact same length, put a little hot glue between the two of them, smash them together, make your cuts. That's a good way to keep those all together. You could also use this to temporarily hold two pieces together before you get fasteners in there. It's just a lot of uses you could have in the shop. And again, it's cheap, it heats up fast, and it works. What else could you want? Before we get to number five and the two that I wouldn't recommend, there's some honorable mentions here that I've used quite a bit. First and foremost is this multi-tool. This isn't the brushless, this is the brush line. I've used this a bunch <laughs> to cut out parts and pieces coming off the CNC, cutting those little tabs. This thing has been awesome. I much prefer this one over the rigid one that I had before this one. I still have it. I just use this one lots more. This is a great little tool to have in the shop. Also the drill and driver. I've used these a decent amount too. Not as much as my Milwaukee and DeWalt. I just prefer them or my rigid, but these work very well. I was used these on building a bench and different projects that I've used over the last year. They work great. They feel great in the hand. They work great. I have no complaints other than if I was buying these again, I would buy the brushless line, the one plus brushless line. I think they would be a little more powerful, get you a little better battery life. But as far as budget goes, I bought these in a combo kit. They've been good. No complaints. All right, before we get to the ones I would, would avoid, this little jewel, I picked this up on a sale and it was cheap, cheap, cheap. 
This is a little work light. And what I like about this, is it has a little feature where, am I blinding you? You can push and pull the lens to focus, basically get a focus light or a flood light. It also has two brightness levels, high and dim, I guess you would call it. And one of the greatest features on it, it has a clip, like a built-in clip that you can clip to the workbench or you can clip to anywhere else you need. It's a little extra light, bandsaw, table saw, anywhere that you need a little extra light because as we get older, it's harder to see. This thing's a great little tool to have. You can focus that light down to the size of a baseball-ish, maybe a little smaller, or you can flood it out to basically a bucket size. Another thing I love about this little light is it's got this flexible head on there. You can just really spin this, twist this, put this wherever you want to focus that light. It's perfect for little projects and things, or if you're having to work on something in the house, in the attic, under cabinets, anything like that, it stands up by itself, it clips the stuff. It's just a good little light. But for the price, this thing is a really good little addition. Even a hater would like to have this in a shop. Just be honest. Two tools I would avoid if I was buying my stuff over again. Number one, I got this in the combo kit. I don't care for this little sander. It's not very powerful. If you're sanding with it, uh, with the battery in there, it just, it stops rotating. It just doesn't have enough oomph to spin around uh, that disc. On wood, just regular pressure, not pushing down on it. I just, I'm not happy with this sander. I don't like this sander. If there's a better option out there for cordless Ryobi sander, let me know. This is the one that come in the kit. And I just, I would avoid this one. I would just, I would recommend you go and get a corded DeWalt sander or even the Craftsman or something like that. That's the ones I would recommend over something like this. I have yet to find a cordless sander that I like. If you know of one, drop a comment. I'll check them out. Also in the kit was this little bitty five and a half inch saw. I don't care for this. I don't, I think it's underpowered. I don't think it's a good size. It's not practical for woodworking projects. Uh, maybe around the house, if you just need to lop off a two before or something, it's okay. It's very weak. I just don't care for this. And honestly, I don't even know what to do with it. It's just here because it come in the pack. I never use it because I have the other one that I much prefer. This is a much better option, the seven and a quarter versus this little one that come in the combo kit. You gotta check out the Hater's Guide to Ryobi Tools right there. Click in that box, click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Even if you're a hater, you, seriously, you need to go check out that video or if you love them, check it out.